This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghura and uh, we have a very unfortunate uh, case today. She is a 6-year-old girl and she has got this bilateral extremely dense cataracts. It's possible that the cataracts have been there for quite some time now because she's already developed nystagmus. The parents have to be responsible for this because they were so ignorant they believed that deferring or postponing the surgery is always good and they were scared to subject the child for anesthesia at such an age. So and that's the reason why the child is presented so late. Nevertheless we'll try to do our best and hope that she regains some vision. The surgery is scheduled under IV sedation and uh, let's examine the cataract first. The anticapsule looks like, you know, quite fibrotic. The whether it is there or not will come to know only when we stain the capsule. So the two paracentesis incisions are made. The capsule is stained under the air bubble. It's irrigated out and then dispersive ovid is used to pressurize the chamber. Now it is evident the zone of the anticapsule where there is extensive fibrosis. So in most pediatric cataracts the most challenging aspect is the rexus itself the rest of the surgery is extremely easy and in this case because of the long standing nature in the fibrotic capsule rexus itself is the most challenging step in this particular eye the fibrotic capsule always behaves in an unpredictable way and it can run away to the periphery in an uncontrolled manner and of course we can't tear in between the fibrotic zone so my goal is to go around the fibrotic zone and then hopefully i am successful in achieving rexus although it might be a little bit eccentric let's see how the things turn out so i'm making a slightly scleral incision and then the sclerocorneal tunnel is created with a 2.8 mm blade itself and we enter into the eye now because the capsule is fibrotic i always try to first puncture the capsule with a 26 number needle raise a flap and then tear the capsule the reason being needle is much more sharper than the pointed forceps so that i can puncture the anterior capsule in a better way the flap is raised and using the forceps i'm trying to tear it now i will be switching between a tearing and the shearing technique based upon how the capsule actually behaves in the beginning i try to fold and tear it and the moment i feel that it is running away i just made the capsule flat and then trying to tear around the edge of the fibrotic zone now remember this is a 6 year old child the capsule is going to be extremely elastic so as the rexus is being performed i'm very mindful in trying to keep the capsule flat and use the tearing technique more often than the shearing technique simply because by using this technique the chances of the rexus extending beyond the equator are much lesser and it's always easier to pull it back so the the direction of the pull is always centripetal and the capsule is kept flat carefully but surely the entire fibrotic zone is negated and the capsule tear is beyond the area of the fibrotic zone and eventually i could complete the rexus although the rexus is slightly eccentric but i would take this on any day The rexus is critical in these young children because it's mandatory that we place the lens into the bag if we really place the lens into the bag the incidence of postoperative inflammation is significantly lesser so that's the reason why getting the rexus right is extremely important once the most important step is done the rest of the steps are very easy so in this case i'm going to use an ac maintainer since i'm planning to do an antivitrectomy i thought this would be handful i have not tried this in many eyes so these are the first few cases in which i'm trying the utility value of an ac maintainer when i'm planning to open up the posterior caps and do antivitrectomy so i go in with my by manual i and a to aspirate all this the soft lens matter time to aspirate the cortex the cortex is quite sticky to the posterior capsule and uh, it takes a bit of a teasing to remove all the adherent cortex and eventually we have a clean capsule uh, now is the time to perform the posterior capsule rexus so again i'm going to puncture the capsule using bent 26 number needle so i can see the split in the posterior capsule now 
I'm going to use cohesive OVD just to place it under this opening so that it pushes back the anti hyoid a little bit. Mind you, we cannot overdo this step because excessive in injection of the OVD itself can extend the posterior capsular tear because at this stage it is still not circular. It has a propensity to extend in either direction. So be mindful of that. Having a good pair of forceps is extremely critical when you're trying to do rexus, especially the posterior capsular rexus. One of the tone edges is held by the forceps and uh, gradually the rexus is being initiated. The posterior capsule is much more thinner than the anterior capsule and elasticity is almost same. The most critical aspect is you need to see well. Thankfully in this case the visibility is great. I am aiming for a rexus which is of about 3.5 to 4 mm in size. Slowly but surely uh, the posterior capsular tear is, is converted into a posterior capsular rexus and it appears to be quite well centered. Now before doing vitrectomy I always prefer to place the lens first into the bag and then perform vitrectomy. The planned single piece intraocular lens is being implanted into the eye. We have undercorrected the IOL power by about two diopters. Just keeping in mind the future growth of the eyeball and the myopia which can come into play as the eyeball grows. And time to perform the antivitrectomy. The vitrector is introduced under the intraocular lens. The infusion is being provided by the AC maintainer. The bottle height is kept around 50 centimeters now. The cut rate which I am using is the highest which is possible in this machine. Doing antivitrectomy is relatively easy, it's no big deal. Just hold the instrument at the behind the level of the posterior capsule and uh, press on the foot pedal and the vitrectomy is being done. It takes a couple of minutes for me to ensure that adequate antivitrectomy is done. Of course, the, there's no end point in these cases. We are doing as a primary vitrectomy, not because of a PC tear. But uh, mind you, this has to be a limited antivitrectomy. You are not going to be very thorough uh, vitrectomy, just enough to prevent the antihyloid and the antivitreous to act as a scaffold for the PCO formation. Then the OVD which is in front of the lens is also aspirated out. A dilutor triamcin acetate is being used to check for any remaining vitreous fibril. I also used diluted pilocarpine to bring down the pupil a little bit. The lens looks to be very well centered as is the posterior capsule rexus. So things are going well and fine. The AC maintainer is taken out. The port is hydrated. The side ports and the main incision is hydrated. And that's it. The case is done. So these are the first day post-op pictures. A patient is doing reasonably well. I plan to do the second eye surgery in a week's time. To summarize, in pediatric cataracts, the surgery is very simple. The only challenge is to get the rexus right and to have an accurate biometry and uh, ensure that we undercorrect a little bit to compensate for the future growth of the eyeball. Of course, I prefer to do a posterior capsular rexus in all patients who are less than 6 to 7 years. And for doing posterior capsular rexus, I think the most important thing is to see well. If you have a, a microscope which gives you excellent red glow, then performing the posterior capsular rexus is no big deal at all. Of course, after that, we do antivitrectomy. Again, it doesn't require great skills in that. So in pediatric eyes, we need to remember that the tissues are all very elastic. So spending a little bit more time in hydrating the wounds and ensure that they're watertight is extremely critical. If required, always one shouldn't hesitate to go ahead and suture. But in this case, I didn't do it because I was uh, pretty confident with the way the wounds had sealed. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.